Oh, I do love renting my space out down in this place. Get to see all sorts of cool stuff like this. How good is that? A little Ford Anglia stock rod. That is so good. <laughs> I would love to have a go in one of these things. I bet that's an absolute blast driving around in one of them. But anyway, welcome back to the channel and we are going to be getting back on to the RS2000. But I do need to send some love and thanks out to all you guys that have sent me pictures and advice on how these side skirts fit. It turns out, thankfully, I've got this side absolutely on point. I do still need to address the other side though. But yeah, thank you very much for all the pictures and for all the advice and whatnot. However, I'm a little bit jealous now because all you guys have sent me pictures of your cozies and here I am just building a replica. <laughs> but one day, I swear to God, one day I will have one. An actual cozy. I'm, yeah, I'm getting there, I'm getting there, one, one day at a time. But this episode then folks, what we need to do is, as much as it pains me to do it, because it's looking pretty cool right now, I need to take that rear quarter panel off and tub the rear arch. Same again on the other side. But whilst we're there, we also need to make a bracket to support this lower section of the rear quarter, because as you may or may not be able to see, there's nothing supporting that at the moment, because it does step away from the car a little bit. So we need to address that as well. We also need to address the lack of bumper support as the current one, the original one, is uh, pretty well dissolved and no longer there. So we're missing that entire little section there, which I need to patch into the car. And then we also need to patch in this fuel filler hole because we no longer need that where we're going. So that is going to be the general gist of this episode. So I'm going to drink my coffee over there. I'm going to get some tools and we're going to crack straight back on with this thing. I, I It's a little bit disheartening folks <laughs> back to looking like a scrap car again <laughs> but like they say sometimes you've got to take some steps back in order to move forward and we definitely need to take some steps in the backwards direction to fix some of that so as i said previously this should come out to here somewhere but in typical ford fashion it is well and truly dissolved it should in fact look something like that with a return on the back, so then you screw in through there and it holds your bumper up. As you can see, we don't have that. <laughs> so we need to get that patched in, along with that bit there, so that'll all be tackled with that little area. We need to cut this out and put a plate in there, so that's just one complete panel, because we don't need that where it is currently. And then, in my haste, I obviously drilled holes where I didn't really need to so we need to go around and weld them up all the way around because I'm an idiot and then last but not least we need to tub these rear wheel, rear wheel arches and uh, we need to cut on any one of these 90 lines that I've drawn right up to about there I reckon so that will give us all the room in the world for wheel movement and whatnot obviously cut the inner wheel tub as well and then join the two back up so that is on the agenda for that. And then finally, we need to tackle this area here. So I need to cut a section out of this new repair panel and patch that in up to about there where we're gonna be starting to take our tub out. So that is next on the agenda. However, just doing what I've been doing in that time lapse, I now can no longer feel my fingers because it is absolutely Baltic. So I'm gonna go home, I'm gonna go and warm up and then hopefully tomorrow, We'll get back down here and start tackling some of this. So I, I shall see you then.
Stop myself for a while. Let's bring you up to speed then, because I've just been an absolute moron and I've just somehow deleted about two hours worth of footage like an absolute idiot. So, yeah, it's all kind of moved forward a little bit since you probably last saw it. I think I've still got a clip of this going in, but I've, yeah, I've somehow managed to delete all the footage of me actually making that. So, for a rundown on how I actually done that, rather than keep running to and from the bench, I'll just cut my panel to shape and I just started tack welding it in places and just hammering it into where it needed to be because there's so many different shapes on this curves around here, down there over in this corner it curves in curves in there then you've got this little bendy bit here so rather than just keep running to and from I thought it'd just be easier just to do it in the car but that is that in obviously I do need to go in and repair all this bit around here so I'll do that next and I've also got a little tiny bit to repair here and underneath here as well so yeah I'm going to go home and sulk for a little while about being an idiot <laughs> and I'll pick you guys back up next time I'm down it and we will get cracking and hopefully get all of that inner skin done and then we can start piecing all this back together and then we're getting there right see you next time And finally folks we've got some progress made this was actually quite the challenge to make I won't I won't lie that was actually a bit of a bit of a pig to be honest but that is obviously now the fuel filler neck sorted out that bit sorted out unfortunately though um, clearing off all the paint and whatnot I've found this bits all pretty rotten and when I cleared out all the seam sealer that was all down around here that is also rotten so we need to cut out probably an area like that and refabricate that and then would you believe it there's more rot here as well <laughs> so we're gonna have to cut all this out and then make a new bit to go in there but in the grand scheme of things that's nothing really is it considering some of the things I've had to do on this but it's been nice to get some progress made I've hardly been down here at all lately I've just been so busy with work and trying to sort out a new work van that I've now got so if, if anyone's interested in some Mark 7 Ford Transit stuff then uh, let us know and I might do some videos of what I'm hoping to do with that thing but for the here and now we need to get back onto this so it's a new day and I've got plenty more to get on with so next step is going to be 
getting that made into there I reckon so once we've got that in there I can then make a new section to go in here and then we can tackle that bit and that bit afterwards and uh, yeah see how we get on with this so let's clamp this in mark it all out and get cutting But that has got to be the fastest install of a panel known to man, surely. Now I've not fully welded it in because what I'm going to do is make this piece up and then I'll weld it, I'll tack weld it in place and tack weld it onto here and then I'll take it back out and fully weld it and then that way I can dress the back of it afterwards. But I've been using these little things off a guy, from, I think it's from Poland, but he's on Instagram. I think it's called penguin tools or something but it's basically like a panel clamp but it saves the aggravation of having because i know there's different types there's a type of a block and then a pin that goes on the back but this one you, you don't need to access the back of the panel you just literally slip it in it's all in two halves and then you just wind it up and it pinches on itself the only thing i think needs to be revised on this it needs some sort of washer on the nut here because as you try and do it up wants to slide the panel away and open up the gap but brilliant little invention 14 quid i think i paid for five of these things so yeah great stuff anyway we need to make a template for this now and then we need to form that in metal get all this bend in there and whatnot and then we can lay that in and hopefully get all that welded together What an evening so far then boys and girls. This is actually going really well, although I probably shouldn't actually talk too soon really should I end up jinxing myself. But so far so good. This panel is now fully welded to this arch repair panel. Uh, what I need to do now is cut out all these spot welds. 
remove this panel, clean up the weld on the back edge and then prime all the inside of this and then we can lay it back in place and fully weld it out and then it's jobs are good. But yeah, it is all going rather well so far. I'm made up with that. So I'm gonna drink my coffee over there and then we're gonna crack on, cut that out and hopefully get this bit fully welded in this evening. And then it's just a case of moving on to these other pieces either tomorrow or another day. We shall see what happens, but I'll pick it back up in a minute when we're ready to crack on with that. Well, I won't be winning any awards for the neatest welding in the world, but it's in there, folks, and it is fully penetrated, so I think we're all good on that front. But I've just realised it is now half past 11, so I'll grind that down tomorrow, and then we'll crack on with the next bit. So I'll see you then. There we go, folks, all ground back and in some primer now. This is a prime example of why you need to be patient with welding, because I've, I've rushed through this, and it hasn't come out particularly well. Why I rushed it, I don't know. I should have just taken a bit more time and got it 100%. But it's in there and it's rot free. So that is the main thing. All of this is being covered over anyway. So sod it is what it is. Um, next step, I am going to get on to sorting this out because it's been bugging me for ages now. And I just want that closed off before I move on to anything else. So new panel down here. Need to lay that in place up there mark it out cut it out and get it welded into place so without further ado and without me waffling on too much longer let's crack on with that and get something done tonight done then folks this side I actually took my time on so it's come out a little bit better but yeah that is 
that all fully welded in now and obviously as you can see I've marked the line which is where I want to cut this section off so I've got free up and down motion of the wheel once it's in there so hopefully it won't clobber anything uh, yeah we're getting somewhere now all we need to do is um, figure out what I'm going to do with this at this point I'm in two minds I don't really know which way to approach it do I just cut slots in it and try and bang it up and basically stretch the metal till it meets this outer body and then cut off any excess or do I just go ahead cut inside and make a plate to go between the wheel arch and the body of the car got a bit of thinking to do on that one what I might do is just go ahead and slot it and bang it up and try that method if that works then golden if not then I'll just cut it out while the plate in see what happens but yeah, we're getting somewhere. It's almost closed off now, which is nice. But in other news, I have just picked up the first puzzle piece to the rear wheel drive conversion. Now this is a 535i BMW rear subframe, or well, the entire back end of one. Um, it's from an auto though, so it's got a really low ratio in the diff, which is gonna pretty much probably do about 200 miles an hour. <laughs> But yeah, we're probably gonna have to change that up. So if anyone knows anything about BMW 5 Series and what diffs are compatible with this subframe, let us know in the comments, because um, this is all very new to me. I need to do a bit of research, but in terms of fitment, it's ideal. These mounting points are literally dead center of the chassis legs in the Escort. So it wouldn't be a great hardship to make it fit that. However, I'm still on the fence of whether or not I'm gonna tube chassis the car or if I just adapt the car to suit that. So yeah, lots to think about. But reasoning for going for this is because I've only got four mounting points of this. Everything is attached to the subframe, whereas something like an E36, E46, which is what I was thinking of going for, you have to attach the trailing arms and whatnot to the body of the car. So it's just more mount points that I'd have to weld in or whatever. So this just makes my life so much easier. Four mounting points, somewhere for the suspension to go and then we're good annoyingly though that suspension turret hole up there the diameter is about five mil too small for the for the bmw shock strut tops to fit up inside so i'm still gonna have to basically cut this out and make a new one so yeah but then it brings me to again do I just cut the floor out of this thing and do a tube chassis or do I just go ahead and fix the mountains of rust that's on this and adapt the body to suit the rear wheel drive conversion I don't know again drop your thoughts in the comment section and let us know what you think which way would you go I don't, I'm still on the fence at the minute but yeah that's a, that's a good amount of waffling I've done so far so I'm gonna get on and start slotting this I think well we'll cut that off start slotting that and then we'll have a go at bashing it with a hammer and see if we can manipulate this up enough to weld it to the outside and see where we end up all right let's make some noise again Well, that certainly warms you up a little bit. So obviously, I've now slotted everything and I have started banging this about and around here, at least, it seems to be pretty good. I think I might struggle when it comes to here because that is quite a big gap that I need to try and fill there. Although the tub does go out that way, so it's going to be a lot of stretching. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to tack this here and as I go around and get bits to meet up, I'll, I'll tack them and then that way I'm stretching the one bit I'm banging rather than... Because as soon as I bang here, this bit flops down and whatnot because it's not actually stretching the metal, it's just pulling it from other areas. So yeah, let's get the welder fired up. We'll start tacking some bits in, carry on beating the absolute crap out of that and hopefully we're on to a winner. Oh, 
we were almost there. We almost had it, but unfortunately, that has stretched as much as I can possibly stretch it now. And as you can see, I've actually torn the metal because it can't stretch any further. And it's also opened up this slot that I'd cut in quite a bit. So yeah, bit of a bummer, but the rest of it all went pretty well to be fair. So all of that up till this point is good. But whilst I was cleaning off more under seal inside here, I did find a couple of scabby, rusty patches. So it's not the end of the world, folks. We need to cut this out now anyway. So that is the plan. We're gonna cut along where this uh, slot has opened up and cut down here. We we'll cut right back across here, up here, lose those two rotten bits, and then we we'll make a new piece to go in there and something that will go over and meet that. So yeah, that is next on the agenda. So hopefully that won't take too much longer. And then we're pretty much done with this wheel arch at that point. And then it's a case of um, figuring out this little rusty bit down here and those lovely little rusty bits to stop in the, underneath there. So, coffee break time, and then we'll crack on with that. And we've got a hole, folks. Look at that. Right. We need to make a new panel to go in place of that one. But honestly, how the hell I survived without these things before is beyond me. Absolutely brilliant tools these are. I'd say, honestly, don't know how I managed to get through stuff without having them things before. And it's one of those, isn't it? If you haven't got it, you learn how to cope without it. But as soon as you get one, absolutely priceless. But I will leave a link to those in the description to Amazon so if you fancy snagging yourself one hit the link and it's an affiliate link and it will help help the channel out as well that'll be a result right I need to find my paper which is there let's make a template and we'll make a new panel for that
this poor car man look at that <laughs> you'd think I'd learn my lesson by now and not go looking for rust but I just can't help myself man so that is the rear chassis leg there as you can see it's got more holes than good metal at this point and it's just going towards helping me decide that a tube chassis is probably the best way to go with this but I mean someone knew that that was all there because there was nothing between the metal and all the shits that had been sprayed in there so someone had tried hiding all this which is just bloody ridiculous yeah not good but moving on we have done the arch it is all done and dusted i won't lie to you though welding this patch in was an absolute nightmare last night i don't know what was going on but it just would not weld very well in the slightest so bit of a bugger that was i've had to leave some meat around the edge here because if i grind all that back so it's all smooth then i'll end up exposing the seam and it'll start splitting so we'll leave some meat around that and that is all good so yeah finally got the arch done now what we need to do is move on to all the other rusty areas so we need to cut this area out here because all of that i can show you is all very well pitted and pretty nasty so we'll lose that replace that section and then down here again that is all pretty well rotten down there so we're cut back here somewhere lose that little bit as well make that flange there make that flange there and then we've got to bring it up and around here because there's a bit of pit in just there as well and then we've also got to make that little bit that goes on the inside there as well so i think that is next on the agenda i'm going to drink my coffee cut them out take them over to the gro uh, over to the bench and then we'll start making some new bits
Right then, we've got a few puzzle pieces then folks. So, we've got this one that goes just up in there, which goes into the boot floor, and then the this panel that goes on the bottom here butts up against that one. So that one goes in there, like that. This one goes up in there somewhere like that. And then last but not least, we've got that one that goes there. So yeah, we've got a bit to get on with. And hopefully I can then retire my gloves because there's not a great deal left of them anymore. <laughs> but after that, I think we're pretty much done on this back corner finally, with the exception of um, <laughs> all of that that I found, but we'll deal with that another day. So let's get the welder out and we'll start welding some of these pieces in and hopefully get this buttoned up. We've only gone and done it. Finally, this has taken so long. But the gloves are officially retired. We are done on this back corner now. All that bottom bit down there is done. All inside there is done. That bit there is done. Yeah, what a milestone. That has been a hell of a lot of work to get that done. But we have made it out the other side. So happy, happy days. But that is gonna be a wrap for this one. I think this video has probably gone on well and truly long enough. So thank you very much if you're still watching at this point, because it's probably been a bit of a slog. But um, hopefully I'll see you again next time. And if anyone happens to have a rotisserie for sale, please drop a comment below and let me know. Ideally close to the southeast of England, because that's where I live, and I don't really fancy traveling up the country for something. Um, and I also need some rear lights for this cosy rep. What I'll do is I'll, I'll attach a picture now, but if anyone happens to have those rear lights for sale, again, let me know, because I'm kind of needing some for this thing. So yeah, but that is gonna be it. So like, comment, subscribe, stay tuned for more, and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.